The KMP algorithm is a string matching algorithm with the optimal worst case time complexity of big O of m plus n, where m is the length of the pattern and n is the length of the text. And it requires a reasonable extra space of big theta of m. In this video we will implement it in JavaScript and we will discuss two different ideas that can lead us to this algorithm. In the last video I showed how to build a DFA to find a pattern in a text. We did that by constructing a transition matrix of size m times the number of letters in the alphabet. There is actually a way to reduce the space occupied by this matrix by transforming the DFA into a different type of automaton containing a new type of transitions called failure links. For each of our states in the DFA, instead of having a transition for each letter in the alphabet, we are going to have just one transition to the next state and one failure link. You see, if your text matches the pattern, you go to the next state, but if it doesn't, well, the comparison fails, so you take the failure link. But when you follow this transition, you don't consume a character. For example, let's say that we have the following text, and we are looking for the pattern Anpanman. If we read A N P A N, we reach the state 5. Now, if the letter is a P, then it failed the comparison, so we don't move to the next state, but follow the failure link, which leads to state 2. Now in state 2, when we read a P, we go to state 3. We continue reading the text. We have the letters A and N. So we are back in state 5. But now we read a T. The comparison fails, so we follow the failure link. Now in state 2, we can't move forward because the comparison also fails. So we take the failure link of state 2, which go back to state 0. When we reach the state 0, there are no more transition or failure link we can follow. So we just discard this character and read the next character in the text. Now that you have a rough idea of how it works, how can we represent this automaton? We don't really need to represent the states and transitions because the transitions are the letters in the pattern. We just need to store the current state we are in, in a variable, let's call it q. The letter p of q is the transition from q to the state q plus 1. However, we need to represent the failure links. Because each state, except the last one, has a single failure link, we can store the failure links in an array of the size of the pattern. We store for the state q the state that the failure link is pointing at. Knowing that, we can build the KMP algorithm. Here, we only care about finding the first occurrence of the pattern in a text. First, let's define n to all the length of the text, and m the length of the pattern. Then we construct the failure link array by calling the failure links function that we will build later. Then we will have two indices, one to go through the text, and the other to represent the state of the automaton. So we go through our text. If the text matches the pattern, we can increment both of these indices. If the state q corresponds to the last state, then it means that we found the pattern in the text and we return its position. Otherwise, if the text doesn't match the pattern, we follow the failure link and update the state q. Now, at the next iteration, we will compare the same character in the text with a different character in the pattern. If these characters are equal, we increment i and q. And if we found a pattern, we return its position. But if the characters don't match, we follow the failure link and repeat this operation until we either found the pattern or until the transition link lead us to the state 0. If we are in the state 0, we can't follow any more failure links, we just stay in state 0. So we add a condition to only follow the failure link if we are in a different state than 0. When q is equal to 0, we need to stop comparing the first character of our pattern with the current character of the text so we need to increment our position in the text. Finally, if we traverse the entire text without finding the pattern, we return minus one. Okay, now we just need to construct the failure link array. So we want to find a pattern and pan man in a text. Let's say that we've already built the automaton and failure links able to detect the pattern and pan. After reading and pan in the text, we are in state five. To go to the next state, we need to read an M. If we don't read an M, we are failing the comparison and need to follow the failure link of state 5. But that's the link we are trying to find. So let's focus on what we know. Because the character we are reading in the text is not an M, 
then we know that the pattern cannot start where we started looking for it in the text, but it can start at the character next to it. So we can simulate our automaton by starting with the letter N. We are in state zero, we read an N, so we stay in state zero. Then we read the letter P, we stay in state zero. After reading the letter A, we go to state one. And finally, after reading the letter N, we end up in state two. This state is the state pointed by the failure link of state 5. So now we can continue building our failure link array. So in state 6, if we read an A, we go to state 7. But if we read something else, we need to follow the failure link of state 6. So this is the same situation as previously. Because we were not able to find the correct character, it means that the pattern cannot start at this position in the text but it can start on the next character. So we can start simulating the automaton from the letter N, but we already did this for N, P, A, N, and we ended up in the state two. So instead of simulating it again, we can store the resulting state in a variable. Let's call it X. So now we just need to keep going with the letter M. In state two, if we are not reading a P, we follow the parallel link. Now that we are in the state zero, because failure links don't consume the character, we need to check if we can go to state one. But here, we need an A, but we only have an M. So we stay in state zero. When we are in state zero, we cannot move forward. We stop looking, and this state is the target of the failure link of state six. And we update the value of X. Let's keep going. In state seven, if we read an N, we go to the final state eight. Otherwise, we follow the failure link that we can find by simulating the automaton for the string NPANMA. But we know that after reading NPANM, we end up in state zero. So we just need to check what happens when we read an A in state zero. This leads us to state one. So the failure link of state seven goes to one. And we are done. If you understand this properly, the algorithm is pretty straightforward to write. So I hope it makes sense. There's actually a different way to think about failure links, which might be a little bit more intuitive, but writing the algorithm becomes harder. So I will talk about it after writing the algorithm. So our function failure links takes the pattern as an argument. Let's define a constant m to hold the length of the pattern. We store the failure links in an array of size m. When we are in state zero, if we fail, we stay in state zero. So we set fail of zero to zero, even if in reality there's no failure link in state zero, because a failure link cannot point to the state it's coming from, because you're just going to keep failing over and over and over again, because you know failure links don't consume characters. Then we store in the variable x the state that the failure link is pointing at. Now we want to fill our failure link array, so we loop from 1 to m minus 1. When we are in state 1, it means that we've correctly read the first character. If the next comparison fails, our failure link leads to state 0. So we can write that failure link of state q is x. Now we need to update the value of x, so that it contains the state pointed by the failure link of the state q plus 1. Let's say that q is state 4, and we know that its failure link, store in x, is the state 1, which corresponds to the state after simulating the automaton by reading the letters n, p, and a. To be able to go to the next state, we need to read the character at position q in the pattern. So to update the value of x, we need to check what happens when we read this character. So if the character at position q is the same as the character that goes out of the state x, then we can increment the value of x. But if that's not the case, for example, if q is equal to five and x to two, we need to follow the failure link of state x. But we don't just do it once. We need to do it as long as we are unable to make these characters match. Once they do, we can increment the state x. Okay, but it's possible that they never match. In that case, x will eventually be zero. And we know that if we fail in state zero, we stay in state zero. So if we do nothing, we will stay in an infinite loop. So we need to break out of the loop once x is equal to zero. 
And because we increment the value of x after the loop, we need to set x to minus 1. So x keep the value 0. And this is enough to build a failure array. So we can return it at the end of the function. OK, but here the code is ugly. We can simplify it by removing the first if statement. Now that's much better. So that's it. That's the KMP algorithm. So I hope you were able to understand it. But if you didn't, and if failure links confuse you, there's actually a different way to think about the KMP algorithm. You see, failure links are also called suffix links. To understand why, notice that when you are in state Q, it means that you've read the first Q characters of the pattern. Or if P is the pattern, we've read P from 0 to Q minus 1. The failure link of state Q corresponds to the length of the longest prefix of P from 0 to Q minus 1. That is also a suffix of P from 1 to Q minus 1. So we can now think of constructing the failure link array as finding borders, a proper prefix that is also a proper suffix. To do that, imagine that you've already found the longest border of this substring of the pattern. Each border has an index pointing to it. If you move these pointers to the right, then if the characters are the same, then we found the next longest borders. But if these characters are different, then we need to do a bit more work. You see, because the characters pointed by the arrows are different, then the longest prefix that is also a suffix cannot stop where the green arrow on the left is. But it can start in the blue border. And you need to realize something about this previous border. It's the same on both sides. And this border can also have borders. And the rightmost character of the substring is next to that red pink border. Because this pink border is also a prefix of P. Then if the character on the right of this left border is equal to the rightmost character, then we found the longest border of this substring of P. But if they were not equal, well, we end up in the same situation as previously. So we repeat the operation until we have no more borders or are running out of characters. If you implement this, you should end up with a similar algorithm as we found previously. If you've watched my video on the Boyer-Moore algorithm, you should realize that this idea is pretty similar to the good suffix rule. If you haven't watched it, I go into much more details, so go watch it. It's pretty good. One more thing. Even though KMP has the optimal worst case time complexity, it's not necessarily the fastest. It really depends on your application. So if you care about performances, you should always benchmark your code. Okay, now you have a choice to make. You can click off the video and never come back. Or you can make me happy by subscribing. Come on. Do it. Do it.